Well, today I'm uh, going to be working a little bit on my Chatamo connector, and uh, I picked up the little kit in Europe when I was there last year. So uh, here's the the Chatamo socket, and I'm just doing a bit of colour matching. We've got uh, all the different coloured wires on the back, figuring out what they are. Um, right at the moment, the blue and the green there I know are can high and can low. Uh, actually, the green's can high. Um, so just wiring off a few a few pins into my uh, cinch connector for the JLD 505 and as you can see I've got a few wired off already got the uh, pack high low and uh, the shunt connector in the I'm not using any of the temperature uh, lines so I've just got those three pins blanked off uh, I've got my neutral line in, I've got the power line in with a fused connector. And what I'm just doing now is I'm making a little bit of a uh, twisted pair canvas. So blue-green to match the Chatamo socket. Uh, so I've gone ahead and just stripped off these, these two ends here. And we've got some of these little cinch. Uh, pins here and it turns out that these crimp off very very nicely using just a standard um, fast on jaws uh, you know the standard uh, quarter inch push on terminal so here's the jaws for that pretty pretty standard stuff I got myself a, a dedicated set for this but I also have another tool with interchangeable jaws this one here is from Toledo but um, the little you can see that the jaws here pull out and they're interchangeable with lots of different types of pins so that's been very handy on on the project so far so uh, just gonna try and do this one-handed and uh, show you how to crimp one of these off In fact, that is going to be extremely awkward to do, but uh, bear with me. We'll see how I go. I can always edit this down later. So we just get that in the... Get the little pin in the smallest set of jaws. This is not working out very well at all. I'll show you what it looks like later. And there we go, we have a couple of pretty reasonable looking crimps there. So as I said, can high, can low. High is the green, low is the blue. So I'm going to just go ahead and put those into my connector. Okay, so this is all pretty confusing. Let's, uh, let's just double check. So here's the... Um, Diagram pins 9 and 8 are can high and can low. In fact, pin 8 is high and pin 9 is low. So, this is the view on the back of the vehicle connector as I'm looking at it now. And there we go. So, that means that the green on the right is pin. Eight and pin eight is high. Okay, so green is high. Let's, <laughs> I suppose that kind of uh, makes sense. Get high on green. So uh, let's put them in. The, the okay, so there we have another couple of 
couple of wires finished off. Got to be quite careful that you hear the little click when you push these in. You've got to push them through the little rubber grommet and they, they go quite deep before they actually make the, the final connection. But of course we still have to press in the little white bits at the end to, to lock everything in place. So uh, actually having said that, the right hand side of my connector here is all finished off. So I'm just going to lock that one off. That's done. Okay, so I'm just going to get up close and personal and I should be able to see the pins directly in there. Uh, so carry on, I've still got, I'm uh, going to wire in my USB connector onto the other side here. Uh, it's pins 1, 2, 3A and 3B. Um, I have purchased a little uh, gizmo for that, if I can find it on my rather messy workbench here. Mm, yeah. Oh, there it is. It's, I've uh, got one of these little project boxes and what I was intending to do here was to use a couple of these screw terminals here to just uh, loop across the 10k ohm resistor that I need uh, according to the diagram here between pins B2 and 12 volt which is C3 so the thinking there was that if I brought those two cave those two wires into this box and then just bridged a 10 k ohm terminal across them in this in this little enclosure that'd be nice and tidy and uh, it also gives me an opportunity to um, once I find the uh, little, little screw collar for this threaded bulkhead here I'll be able to uh, put the little USB header in there and we've got a little weatherproof cap for if I should ever take it off and I imagine that I'll just push that through this other hole here and the cap can can just uh, screw into there and uh, cover that off nicely so uh, there is still a relay in there I was actually hoping I could maybe get a larger uh, project box there and and put that that relay there inside the uh, enclosure as well but uh, it's going to be a little tight so not to worry I won't worry about that so here we are it's all uh, pinned off and I've uh, put a bit of braiding on and a couple of shrink it's shrink tubing just to hold everything together wrapped it all up ready for another day and uh, what I've done here, I've kept the USB connection pins out separate um, and the rest are all ready to be run off and terminated and uh, we'll just put that aside and move on with the next bit. Okay, so now I'm uh, just been playing a little bit with my dash driver uh, setup. So I've got the um, MOSFET driver board uh, plugged into the what was the stereo supply and tucked back in the dash there currently uh, unplugged from that little white socket you can see back there but uh, it's also not stacked up on the board either so what I got here at the moment I've got the Arduino Uno and the Seed Studios um, CAN bus board and I have that plugged into my little laptop over here so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up uh, the serial monitor and we get uh, canvas initialization okay and I'm just going to turn the car on go through a, a short uh, and there we go so we're uh, reading some variables from the can bus there everything's uh, currently zero which uh, isn't really right except for the fault code so that's uh, fault code 1 on one of the controllers so uh, 
theoretically the readings I should be getting on here are the actual uh, controller temperatures or at least the motor temperature um, actually some of that stuff might not currently be plugged in but at least the controller temperature should be showing um, yeah okay well getting closer we'll move along okay well uh, I haven't really done anything I went off into the uh, front of the car to see if there was anything unplugged and when I came back uh, lo and behold we're getting some temperature readings so um, everything's looking cool that means I can uh, plug in the MOSFET driver board now and I'll uh, see if I can get any of these dash gauges going but uh, first things first I'll probably have to put a couple of needles onto the gauges so uh, bear with me I'll get onto that so there we have it I've got uh, a couple of the wires uh, terminated there onto the negative terminals of each of these channels. If we can get that to focus in a bit, it's not going to do it. But um, I can see the fuel gauge has come up to center point. Uh, I've got the, con the dash controller set to just a standard mid range value so I can set the needle. Uh, to the middle. Um, the inverter temperature is just off zero but on the other side here you can see that the motor temperature is sitting at zero and that's because I don't have a wire plugged in. So if I just take the blue terminal termination for that and I put it to earth we get a, a sweep of the gauge you can see and if I go and put that onto the appropriate terminal on the driver board we have a CAN bus driven value so that's uh, looking pretty cool um, the only thing I will mention at the moment is that there's quite a little hum or whistle coming from the dash cluster I'm assuming that's from the PWM and um, maybe I can see about calming that down I don't know how to go about that it's probably something to do with the frequency of the PWM but uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it that badly once you're actually driving along and you've got the stereo going anyway so we'll, we'll see how that goes and uh, you probably won't hear it over the power steering pump anyway so I'm um, pretty pleased about this um, I think I'm gonna leave it there for tonight and uh, Talk to you later. Bye.